Herzlich willkommen hier aus Unterföhring, der Heimat von meinem Bowling Shop, zu einer neuen Folge unserer Interviewserie. Heute bin ich hier mit Martin Larsen aus Schweden. Hi Martin. Wie geht's? Gut. Also ich werde alles auf Englisch führen, also es wird auch keine Untertitel geben. Also jetzt geht's los und wir starten einfach. So Martin, uh, tell us something about you. Where are you from? What you're doing? Yeah, something. Well, uh, I'm from Sweden, of course, from a little city called Borbay, which has about 50,000 citizens. Uh, nowadays, I live just outside Gothenburg, and, and Gothenburg is the second biggest city in, uh, in Sweden, which is about yeah. half a million uh, citizens. So um, that's where I live with my family, uh, my my wife now since the 29th of December. Um, and my two kids, uh, Isabella and Emilia. Okay, so um, when did you start bowling? I, I started when I was around nine. Uh, my dad took me to the bowling center uh, mm -hmm. and he liked to bowl, so I, I tried bowling a bit. And, and I was one of those kids that, that loved to try a lot of things. I played football and I was shooting rifles and I was. Uh, Uh, we had a sport in Sweden called floorball, like it's an inside an indoor uh, thing with the, with a stick and a plastic ball. Yeah. Um, so I did a lot of things, but um, I think when I turned around 16, uh, I more or less quit other sports and, and uh, got more and more involved in bowling. Okay, so I I recognize we know each other a long time now. Mm -hmm. I think a couple of like, years. Yeah, I think it's about 10, 12, 13 years. Could be something like yeah. that. Yeah. So you're bowling European tour. You started with the European tour. So you you started out in the national team first before European tour, or? Yeah, I, actually, I was one of those kids. I was not very talented when I was younger. I, I uh, joined the national team. I got picked for the Swedish national team my last year as junior, '97, and I played the Nordic Championships in Norway, and I played the European, uh, uh, the, the the Baker. I, not Maybe it was not Baker, but we played a team event in, in uh, with the juniors uh, down in Annecy in, in France. Okay. So that was '97. So uh, ever since '97, I've been uh, in the national team. Okay. So and um, I, I remember you were a lot of traveling with uh, Robert, mm -hmm. Robert Anderson. Yeah. So correct. it was just like like twins, a small and a big one, <laughs> and uh, it looks like from outside. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So and uh, you played a lot of tournaments. I remember Barcelona and and. A lot of other tournaments. Yeah, we, uh, me and Robert, uh, we come from two different places in Sweden, but we joined in Team Pergamon in Gothenburg, and we uh, spend a lot of time together uh, practicing and on, on the road for, for tournaments. But we, uh, we, we uh, for sure worked hard together uh, and practiced a lot. And we're both of us, I think, uh, uh, the same kind of way. Like we needed to work hard to become good. Like we were not very talented, any of us, and we didn't have it naturally. So mm -hmm. we worked our way there and, and, and we worked hard on our, our uh, uh, physical game and, and to get it kind of simple and, and being able to repeat. And um, So I think we ma matched up pretty good together there when it comes to uh, yeah. the feeling what you needed to do to become good. Okay, <coughs> when do you decide that you want to get pro? Uh, after I finished school I started working uh, in my home city and um, I was starting first in a warehouse and then I worked my way up so I was uh, doing sales um, sales things for office furniture uh, and it was becoming better and better and I kind of liked the, the, the job. Um, at the same time I got better in bowling so I needed to have more days off to bowl more mm -hmm. and, and that's a conflict that's very very hard to, uh, yeah, to bring another one to work. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, Then I suddenly got a sponsor in Sweden who, who took me to the side and said, uh, hey, what about uh, if you should uh, work a little less and bowl a little bit more? I go, oh, that, that sounds fun, but how should we do that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he decided to help me more so I could actually uh, work a little less. And, and, and then even the next step was to, to quit work. And, and I was doing some job for him and some, some job on the side for bowling. but. Uh, um, And then suddenly I was just bowling. <laughs> okay. So I think I was really fortunate to have um, a backer, uh, a sponsor that, that was able to back me up, so I didn't have to, I didn't have to go to tournament to feel like I have to win something yeah. to be able to. So to you win. don't have the big pressure to, you have to win something. Exactly. To, so yeah. I was able to to go there, and of course you still feel pressure. They want to make sponsor happy and pay back the money and stuff. But I know that was not the money. He didn't he didn't need the money. 
uh, it was more for myself to, to feel happy about getting better and being competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was sure helping me doing those longer trips. Um, I mean, bowling in your home, home country, you, you get to a certain level, then you feel like you have to get out and then bowl against the best to become better. And, and that's expensive. So. Yeah, and then uh, the, <coughs> I remember the, the European tour getting bigger, mm -hmm. so that was your first uh, come out. And then I think when the PBA decided no more exemptions, it was your chance to get into the PBA, right? Yeah, uh, first we had a really good thing in Sweden with the Super Six Tour and the Super Series Tour. Yep. So we had some really great tournaments in Sweden and that was helping us a lot. I think we, we really miss that for a couple of years in Sweden. But that was the first stage and after that it was the European Tour. Uh, and at that time the European Tour was getting better and better and, and Kim was doing a great job and, and, and getting this uh, good stops all around Europe, so we were able to travel there. Um, and for a long time PBA felt uh, pretty far away. Like it's, it's, uh, it's a long way to, to travel, but it's also so many great bowlers. So it's kind of a little scary to go there and try. And they have the exemption thing too. So uh, I actually was able to qualify through a couple of tournaments. Uh, so I was exempt one year and then they dropped the exemption thing. Okay. So I was just able to, uh, I did a pretty good uh, USPC Masters to just get exempt and then I was exempt for a year and then they dropped that thing. So, um, But ever since then um, I've been kind of bowling most of the stops on, on tour since the first World Series in Detroit and uh, that was 2009 I think. Uh, something like that, 10 years I think ago. so. Yeah. I was there 2011, that was my first one. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, so it's um, it's been a lot of traveling um, for sure, and uh, it was especially on PBA. You were unlucky a lot of times, so and uh, you're still waiting for the first PBA title. I'm still uh, still fighting and still waiting for sure. Um, I come to the conclusion that there is no way that you can like hunt the first title. Like you, you can you can work and and be yourself and work hard and become better and better. Uh, and if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Uh, there's so many good bowlers, so there's always some guys that match up and bowl good. Uh, you need to have your day, um, you need to bowl a guy that doesn't have it. Uh, I've been very close a couple of times, and I hope I'm gonna get it. Um, but if not, it's not like I'm gonna sit at home and cry yeah. about it. It's, it's been a fantastic career, I'm, I'm soon turning 40, so it's... Um, uh, hopefully, I haven't peaked yet, but um, who knows, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a great run uh, and I'm, s I'm still running, so we'll see. Yeah, it looks like that. We saw <laughs> all at the Euro Challenge. Talking about the Euro Challenge, you just won. It yeah. Was, I think it's one of your biggest titles you, you won in Europe. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is for sure. Um, and it's one, like I said before, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. It was one of those, first of all, I was not sure to come here because we were playing the World Series yes. in Detroit. And we had like six days off, and then it was uh, the uh, USBC Masters in Vegas. Um, and up until like a couple of days before, I didn't really know if I was going to go back and forth. Um, I had the time, and Team Sweden have a, uh, had a little get together here, so we had some support with squads. Uh, but still, it was a very long way to go for yeah. a couple of days, and then back to Vegas. Um, and I decided I, I didn't think I bowled very bad at World Series, but not good enough. So. Well, yeah, okay, let's give it a go. I'll, uh, I found some decent flights for, for miles, so I didn't have to pay a lot. Got over here um, and I was uh, going to go check in at the hotel because yep. I flew all the night. Uh, but they didn't want to let me check in, so I said, okay, what should I do now? I need to stay awake. So I went over and, and pulled right away. Um, so more or less six hours after I, I landed from Detroit, I made the cut. <laughs> uh, and I was just like, ah. Just pure, yeah, pure coincidence. Um, and and after that, I think I think the lane changed a lot, and I bowled two more squats. And I was not even close. Um, so it was very good that I made it there. Um, then in the morning in the final, I didn't bowl very good, uh, and I left a, a ten pin in the tenth, and I thought I was out mm. in the first cut. But I was uh, there was a couple of guys that bowled some bad games, so I just managed to to get in. Um, and, and all final day I had a terrible look on the fresh. Like I didn't have any good ball reaction at mm. all. I couldn't almost shoot 200. Um, so I was just like fighting my way there and, and all the time I felt like, okay, if I can get another spot, another, another like uh, move one more, it's okay. Uh, but it never felt that I'm gonna win it. 
yeah, like it never. And then in the round robin, when I got to the round robin, I I was able to get the the, the good look a little bit uh, before the other guys. So. so we are now at the round robin. Yeah. So for the for the round robin, uh, like normally I have my game plan. I like to start with lower RG balls, like the phase twos, the idols, and sometimes like the idle pearls, but. Very rarely I like to go to high roads and then the higher RG balls early, but this case I started the lane, the lane started hook so early, the front started hook so much, so I decided to go to the high road earlier than I normally do. Um, and it was not great on the fresh, but, but pretty soon after it, it, it got pretty good and I could kind of slow down and, and it shaped really well and it went through the pins great. So during round robin I felt like, ah, oh, I started to get a pretty good look here and, and the other guys were not matching up very good. Uh, so I felt like if I could really make a run in the last couple of games in round robin and get top seed, yeah. uh, I might have a much better chance than, than having to bowl two matches because it's going to be fresh again on the, on the yeah. step ladder. Uh, and I did, I bowled some really good games in the end and I was able to, to be top seed and, and uh, then I go like, okay, so what should I do now? I had one more game and, and I still didn't have a good, good look on the fresh. Mm. So, I decided to go with the high road anyway because that's the only ball that's been striking, uh, and it didn't look very good. It, it actually was too clean, um, and I didn't throw enough great shots. But uh, Nico had even more problem than me. So in this case, I was just like I said, it was just meant to happen. A lot of things doing the way just got my way, and, and after 20 games that day, or whatever it was, it yeah. was a long day. I was standing there as a uh, champion of the Euro Challenge, one of the biggest tournaments we have in Europe. So that was. Um, Really, a great day for me for sure. It's been been some some years where I had some struggling too. I had some wrist uh, problems. I got some surgery two years ago, and it's been a long way uh, back. But so, so that day was a uh, huge. It was really good. Yeah, it was. And we also had uh, a, a meeting for something like this, but we missed it because uh, you won. Yeah, so exactly. We were meant to, to do this interview then, but I I was too busy bowling all day. Yeah. So um, now we're here at the European Championship and doing it now instead. Oh. That's fine for me. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I also put a video of the final on online on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, I got a couple of questions because you you are trying the approach so much, and why do you do that? So um, there's been a little issue for me and for many others. Um, there is an orange heel from one of the comp uh, shoe companies that is very very soft, and when the approaches are slick, that a lot of players like to use that one because it really makes them stop. Uh, but the problem is that it's so soft that it leaves residue, it leaves rubber okay. on the approach. Okay. Uh, and when you happen to ball the same place as somebody that uses that one, and um, you try to slide in the rest of the rubber, uh, and it just really makes you uh, yeah. un inconsistent slide. Like you slide and you stop, you slide and stop. Uh, and Nico was using that one, so I used to want to make sure every shot that I got. The, 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 rubber uh, the rubber off and I don't have to think about it so I said I know it's gonna look strange and it's gonna look weird whatever but I'm just gonna make sure that I take it off so I can focus on throwing shots and not being afraid of sticking or sliding or, or whatever uh, it's actually gone to the to the point where at the uh, PBA uh, every PBA stop we have um, that that heel is not allowed uh, okay so PBA himself have banned that orange heel um, and I know the shoe company is trying to um, to do something similar that that's, that's better and don't leave any rubber behind. Uh, but at the moment, it's um, it's legal to use it and um, can't stop anybody. But I, I just really pay attention because I know it's for me to I, I slide kind of I have kind of a long slide, and it's um, it's not a good not a good yeah. thing for me. So that's that's the reason. So now <coughs> we are here at uh, the European Men's. Mm -hmm. What is your expectation? What what do you think? What's your goal? Well, the goal is, of course, to take some medals, um, and I, I, I've heard I'm the only one that's won the Masters title back to back, uh, and of course, to win it the third time would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I have to say, though, after the official practice, I'm a little scared. Um, we'll, Kegel is trying new oil, and um, it's pretty hot in the center, uh, and I feel the fronts are hooking more than ever. I think that it really hooks early, and it's a pretty flat pattern. So I think the scoring pace will be pretty low. Um, I decided not to check in the urethane, and that could be could be a mistake. But I felt for my for my uh, way of playing, um, it hooked too early. Uh, but I think some some higher rate guys with some more speed, they can could be um, 
having some success with, with, with your thing. They're, they're hard enough uh, for it for sure. Uh, we'll see uh, how it um, develops during the week, but uh, I'm, I'm expecting a championship with pretty low scoring pace. So uh, okay, what do you uh, do? You feel the the leveling of the lanes? They just leveled the last four weeks. Oh, they, I, I didn't know that they yeah. did the last four weeks. Uh, I mean, I've just had the the, the uh, official practice and we move every eight minutes and stuff, so it's impossible to say anything. It's just to try to get a feel. So, so I can't really say anything about that. And uh, I haven't really gone through the lane map uh, from the whole house. Uh, I tend to look into the pairs I'm going to. Um, so I, I don't have a big um, saying about that yet. Okay. So. But they leveled it the last four weeks. Oh, so. that's that's great, and I think the more places that can do that, uh, it, it's it's really important because we, we see the tougher the patterns are, the more the topographic plays in. Yeah. So and if you hit some lanes and some pairs that are are not flat and then vice versa, it could be heaven and it could be uh, hell. Yes, there's so, both ways. Uh, yeah. So the Weber Cup is coming next week. You're coming competing in the Weber Cup a lot of times, uh, so this year not because of the European Championships or was it? No, it's it's actually more I'm playing the European Championship because I'm not picked to bowl uh, the for the Weber Cup. Uh, and I totally understand uh, it's it's four players per, for the whole Europe, it's really tough to get a spot there and I've been very, very lucky to be in the team for many years. So um, this year um, uh, Osco got back and I've been having some issues with my wrist and, and my, my physical game hasn't been on top, so um, uh, I, I, I would have loved to be there uh, when, when Europe is, uh, actually it's the first time they, Europe is traveling to the States to yeah. bowl uh, in, in Vegas. It's a fantastic event, Matchroom does a great job, it's, it's just unbelievable atmosphere and the feeling to bowl for Europe on a one lane stadium against the best guys in, in mm -hmm. the States. Um, that's that's where everybody want to go. I think it's it's fantastic. So now I, I I'll vote for my country instead, and that's a great feeling too. And I can be be here and try to get some medals for Sweden uh, while we will look at the guys in in Vegas next week and yeah. see if they can uh, bring the cup back. And US won last year, and that was the first in many years. So um, we've been fortunate and 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 been born good enough to be able to beat them many years, and that's that's been one of my top things in yeah. my career for sure. Do you know when it is? I think it starts in six days. Uh, I think the 18th, 18th I, I think it starts, yeah. And uh, it's like four weeks? It's three or four days. Uh, it, it's, it's not that long. It's, I, normally, normally it's a Friday night and it's Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I haven't really seen exactly how it is now, but it's, it might be a fourth day now, but it's three or four days. Okay. So I'm directly after Spoiler Expo? Yep. And in Vegas? We will see that. I, I will be there, so I will take some videos from there. Yeah, that's cool. So you're, you're a long time Storm guy. Mm -hmm. So you were with Storm for many years now. Yeah. Uh, and what's many gonna... years to come. Oh, well, hopefully, uh, you know, no, but, but uh, Storm has been supporting me very, very good. And, and, and I like the company and I like the, the equipment. So I, I haven't had any reason to, to leave. They haven't kicked me out and I don't want to leave. So uh, um, we'll see what the future brings. Uh, I mean, in bowling, you never know. Um, yeah. But as far as, as, as uh, I see it, I don't see any end in it uh, right now. We have the, uh, the Storm Lucky Larsen tournament, uh, which they're deeply involved in. I'm deeply involved in the World Tour event in, in Sweden. Uh, so we have a good um, relationship both for, for me personally and also on side of my own bowling for, for trying to um, promote the brand and, and okay. the Storm more overall. So you, you just uh, get into the Storm Lucky Larsen, that's the tournament in Sweden. You're organizing with some other guys and um, is there already a registration open? Can the customer or the yeah. viewers uh, register for the tournament and what kind of tournament is it? And Absolutely, I think, I mean I think uh, before it's been the Boardmaster Open and uh, the Euro Challenge has been the two really big ones in, in Europe and now we I think we added uh, the Storm Lucky Larsen Masters to it. Um, unfortunately um, there was a little dispute between world bowling and European bowling uh, tour. Because of the women's handicap? And because of the women's handicap there was one of the things, uh, absolutely. Uh, so Europe says you have to give ladies eight pins a game yeah. uh, and then you can be on the European tour. And the world tour and PBA says you can't give any handicap to the ladies, uh, but if you, 
if you want to consider your tournament to, to have a PBA title and a World Tour title, then you can't. And um, of course, we would like to be on both tours. Uh, I think we don't have enough big tournaments in Europe, so that would be great to uh, to have the tournaments we have on both tours. Uh, but we decided to go for the World Tour and, and, and uh, give away a PBA title if you're a PBA member. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately this year we're not in on the European Tour. Hopefully that, that changed, but um, for now that's the, the reason. Uh, how can they sign in? Yeah, how they can sign in. Uh, the registration is open. Uh, do, uh, just visit Lucky Larsen Masters, uh, se or .com. Okay. I'm not really sure, you have, you have to take a look at that. Um, there are spots open. Uh, there's, uh, Extra prices and cheaper squads the first weekend, and Germany is pretty close, so I guess yeah. you should be able to just drive to Helsingborg. Helsingborg is a very nice little city just at, at the coast. It's a really great place to be, even when you're not bowling. Uh, they actually just started to rip out the lanes in that center to, to uh, install brand new lanes. Okay. Um, so we're looking forward to a great event there, and, and um, the first two years has been won by Jason Belmonte and Carl Troop. Uh, so we'll see who's going to take it uh, you. this time. Yeah. yeah. So we also have the track open here, 10th mm -hmm. anniversary. It's already 10 years old now. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, as we know both tournament organizers, we know how much work it is. Yes. And, and to be able to run it for 10 years, it's, uh, it's great. And uh, I mean, you're doing, doing a lot of job in your shop. And to be able to add this, it's, uh, it's great. So it's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll hope it's going to be good and um, good competition and, and good turnout. And yeah. I heard it's getting better and better. You said, yeah. Yes, it's it's getting better and better every year. So and we will see. And it's getting tough every like every year. Yeah, we're staying with the same pattern for the last five years. Yeah, yeah, we just minor changes and uh, cut the numbers are low. Yeah, it's no, I know it's tough, and it's uh, reminds me of the pattern we're bowling for the championship. It's uh, you have to execute very good shots. It's, uh, and if you don't, you're not going to get any good yeah. results. So, uh, so and I kind of, kind of have the same uh, uh, things with the uh, with the tournament uh, with the Storm Lucky Lassa Masters. We haven't had any very easy lane conditions, and um, I mean, I guess that's personal. What do you like? But yeah. I like him to be a little challenging. Like I like to have work yeah. good bowling. Because when so many good players <coughs> are in and you make it easy, the number is getting ridiculous high. Yeah. yeah. We were talking yesterday about um, Istanbul Open. Where you lead with 16 something. I, don't know, Still, yeah. sin, I think it's more than 10 years ago. Uh, I actually don't remember what year it was either, but I, I, uh, I know I've, I had my two personal best scores there. I know I got there Thursday and I bowled straight away and I had 15 55. Yeah. And I decided to, to bowl another time on the Friday and I shot uh, 1600 then. Yeah. So it's. Um, Not a lot of guys can play, already played 1600 in six game block on European tour. No, uh, I don't know. I think they have a list. Uh, I think it's five, five or six guys or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I will have a look on that. Yeah. So um, let's come back to Storm. So they just announced uh, new balls. Mm -hmm. What is your expectation for them? And it's the Astrophysics and the Accu2 Emerald. So Storm is a company. They don't feel like they are uh, when when they come out with great cores and great cover stocks. Uh, they tend to stick with them and mesh them together. Uh, they're not just throwing out new cover stocks and, and new cores just because. Uh, if they feel something is working, uh, they take to working things and they put them together. Yep. Um, so like the, the IQ Tour Emerald now is, is, is more or less an IQ Tour Pearl and, and with, with a new color, it, it's a, a ball that's been working great for so many bowlers for so long time. Uh, and even by, by, by um, getting other colors into you normally tend to have a little different reaction. Yep. Um, I tend to to, to like uh, darker balls, and this dark green thing looks really fantastic. Yes. So uh, uh, I hope it's going to be something that I like. Uh, I haven't thrown it yet. Um, it's it's on my to do things when I got home from the championship. Um, so that R2S Pearl pearl coverstock has been on, on many balls, and it's one of the best clean cover stocks that we yeah. have in the market for sure. I already tried it, mm -hmm. so I made a video. Here is the link, oh, yeah. and uh, for me, it's a little bit early and smoother than the. IQ Gold. Oh yeah, so okay. It's, uh, but it's predictable. Like the IQ is very, it's smooth for a pearl. Yeah, and I think it's one of those uh, cores for sort of it suits uh, a wide variety of bowlers. Yes. Um, it's very tough to say there's somebody that absolutely not should like it. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, that I think that's it's going to be a, a great one for sure. And um, the physics we had has been pretty popular on tour, uh, but. 
kind of many, uh, pretty many times it's been a little early, like it's been yeah. bleeding out a little bit. Uh, it's been good for a couple of games, but then it's been been a little too early. Um, and I think that's why they they re released the astrophysics. So yeah. it's um, probably the ball to to go to right after, or even a little early if you throw a little slower, you can probably get away with throwing it from from early in the block. But uh, for for, uh, for me, I think it's going to be a ball. Uh, it's going to be pretty close to the hail pearl. Like it's going to yeah. be pretty clean and, and strong down the lane. So that's just my expectations. Uh, we'll see if they uh, if they match up. Yeah, we will we will see. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to something from you. And um, so we are pretty much done. Thank so you thank you very much for your time, and uh, oh, I wish you good luck for uh, for the championships. Hopefully, we see us in the summer in Track Open or Lucky Larsen or somewhere. Yeah, I would like and to see you in Sweden. Yeah, <laughs> um, maybe. But um, our baby is coming in September. Ah, so yeah. congratulations! Yeah, thank I wish you. you all the best. So and uh, so, I, I don't think we can. Uh, make it. <laughs> prop. I don't think your wife will let you go there. Yeah, but maybe, <laughs> maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, enjoy your time here in Munich and thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Thank you very much for wa watching and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>